All right, I know people don't like these videos where you don't see anything, but it's gonna take too long for me to set up that other thing with, with the screen capture thing, with the video games. I, I don't know how good that is anyway. Um, so I'm just gonna do it this way just for now, and I'm already on a roll. <laughs> so we're talking in the last video about why Muslims should be Republicans and also why Jews should be Republicans. Um, and, and I specifically mean American traditional Muslims who believe in traditional values, believe in family values, believe in most of the same things as far as how people should live that Jews and Christians believe in. I'm talking about religious Jews and, and you know, conservative religious Christians. Um, I mean, there's no such thing as an irreligious Christian. There really shouldn't be any such thing as an irreligious Jew. That doesn't make sense. You know, how, how can you be a secular Jew? That just that doesn't make any sense. I mean, what, what I always say is that I, as a religious person, I said this earlier today, can identify the secularist as a Jew, but the secularist, how can he self-identify as a Jew? What is, what is it, uh, unless he's just plain racist, you know, um, I mean, my belief is based on a religious devotion, and that's why I can say, yeah, so-and-so, yeah, unfortunately, that's, this guy's a Jew, because his mother is Jewish, apparently, you know, I, I kind of would wish that some of these people would be Christians, but, um, I mean, obviously, I wish they would be Orthodox Jews, but I think a Christian is, is uh, if, if you want to say between being a Jew, being a secular Jew or a Christian, and I, I don't mean this to offend Christians, because I, I'm saying specific, because, I mean, just put it, in, put it in your shoes. Would you rather, as a Christian, someone who was a Christian, become an Orthodox Jew or become an atheist, right? which is the lesser of two evils. You would probably say the Orthodox Jew is the lesser of two evils, right? Between, if he's not gonna be a Christian, to be an atheist or being an Orthodox Jew. And so in the same way, I'm saying, for me as the Orthodox Jew, this, it, between someone being a secular Jew and being a Christian, that secular Jew be a, be, Becoming a Christian is a lesser of two evils, as opposed to just being a secular Jew. And a secular Jew doesn't mean a Jew who goes to shul on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. He's not secular then if he goes to shul on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, even if he goes to a Reform temple. But there's other issues with the Reform, and it's problematic. And uh, to, the, to the extent of the damage that the Reform are doing politically, I would probably also say that Christianity is the lesser of two evils between Reformed Judaism and Christianity. Um, doesn't mean that I don't consider them to be religious Jews. They are religious Jews. Um, even if they're not halakhically Jewish, some of them. You know, but we have to d make a distinction between someone who's halakhically Jewish, someone who practices Judaism in some form, and someone who practices um, the proper form of Judaism, that's actually Judaism, and not some kind of water, either watered down or mockery of Judaism or whatever it is. Um, or worse, I mean, because to me, I could forgive, you know, all right, they want women to sit, women and men to sit together. They want women rabbis. I don't, like I was saying in the last video, you know, our, our, you know, what Dr. Martin, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, you know, are, are you just trying to be a good black doctor, black lawyer, black cop, black teacher, black shoe shine boy, black sweep, sweeper? And I don't mean that to be racist. I'm taking those. I'm just saying, are you just trying to be a good doctor, lawyer, cop, teacher, shoe shine boy, sweet, and there are, there are white people who shine shoes. I mean, I, I know them. I know them personally. Um, at, at where I work. 
Um, so it's, it's not a racist issue here. But what I'm saying here is, you know, um, is your identity politics, you know, somehow having what to do with who or what you're doing and you know and that's part of your identity in your occupation or whatever and I would say the same thing I don't have a problem with a woman being a rabbi necessarily I I, I mean not traditionally you know but I, I, I am I personally am supportive of the idea of women being Orthodox Jewish clergy but I think their role has to be radically different than that of the rabbi. Um, I mean, we, we, I mean, it's an interesting thing, you know. In chaplaincy, you have in the Catholic Church deacons who are professional chaplains and make a good living and have a nice government job as a chaplain, and I don't have a problem with that. I want to extend that to say that do you just like you don't need to be a priest then to be a chaplain you could be a deacon you could be a nun, you could be a monk so so too in the Jewish tradition we need to have something else that could be a chaplain and, and not exclude more Jews from the chaplaincy and say only rabbis can be chaplains. Part of that is also a lot of people that are called rabbis. They're not rabbonim. They're not these tremendous talmidei chachamim. They just, you know, got some kind of a title. They might have not even learned Yeridea. They might have not have to take bechinus in, and I'm talking in orthodoxy, they might have never had to take Bechinus and Taruvis and Bas Um Which, again, we can ask, how valuable is that necessarily? We understand that's the traditional way that we ordain rabbis. But, you know, is and, and, it, sh and it should definitely be part, but, they, you know, we, we don't want to take that away from the rabbinical ordination, but and, and we don't want to, you know, eliminate other things from rabbinical ordination. It's good that people have a title rabbi. And, and the thing is, but that being said, you know, that's the uh, Yorah Yorah, Smicha. But, and then there's Yadin Yadin to be a Dayan. But then there's also Rav Manhik, you know, which is pretty much just a piece of paper. I mean, it's maybe a little bit more than that. And... Certainly to be a chaplain, Rav Manig is good enough uh, as far as if, if a deacon can be a chaplain, then Rav Manig could be a chaplain. A cantor could be a chaplain. I guess the sheikhit or moil, I guess technically, and they don't have the other smicha you want to say, but, um, but we got to figure out some, some kind of title to give women... I mean, Rebetzin is, is good, or Rabbanit is good, but it, generally we understand that to be the rabbi's wife. Um, so they want to talk about something Maharat. I don't know about that. I, I mean, personally, the, the title reverend is fine. What's wrong with calling somebody reverend? I mean, in the old days, Shochtim and Malim were called reverend. And... Even many, and, and, and there were a lot of, you know, Jewish clergy who were not maybe traditional rabbis, didn't have a Yorah Yorah Smicha, but were Shochtim and Molim and Chazanim, and knew how to, you know, open up a Mishnah Brewer or something. Well, I guess it was before the Mishnah Brewer, but, you know, but, uh, you know, could, 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 uh, you know, Side chap, you know, you know, Simon and Sif, and Sif Cotton and the Shulchan Aruch, and maybe even the Shach and Taz, and 
you know, knew how to learn a little bit, you know. And these men were usually, the title was usually reverend. Sometimes they were, you know, colloquially called rabbi. And that's what you had in, in colonial America. Um, and, and I think that, that would be the perfect title. Um, the thing is, is that, you know, to say minister, reverend, pastor, whatever you want to call, chaplain, and that's it, you know, and there's, uh, because, you know, there's a, a definite need for women in chaplaincy, and I'm very proud that my wife is a chaplain now. Um, I mean, she essentially works for me. Um, I have a contract with the state hospital, and she works for me as a subcontractor. But I think that's very appropriate, you know, because there's certain things. But that being said, you don't need to learn Taruvus and Basar B'cholov, although those are useful things for women to know, because they, I mean, I don't mean to be sexist, but the, those are kitchen issues. Um, so, uh, it, you know, uh, but that being said, it, it, it's not, I'm not saying that women should be traditional Orthodox rabbis. I'm saying, but the thing is, you know, we, there is a concept that the, for women to be the equivalent of like a Hasidic Rebbe. This is not what I was intending to talk about at all right now. Um, yeah, and there, there were classically women who took Kvitlach and even feared Tish, and even, even at Hayom, you know, there is a certain sense of a Rebetzin fearing Tish. Uh, you see this in Bells, certain other places. It's, um, it seems a little strange to some people, um, but not exactly like that. But And, and that goes back, you know, in the, by the first Bells of by the Sar Shalom, the Rebetzin Rebbets and Malka would sit next to him by the Tish, which is almost unheard of, you know. I mean, even at the dinner table, when there are guests there, you almost never see the Rebbets and sitting next to Sinisha Rebbe. The only time I ever saw it was in Ranana with the Clevelander Rebbe Shlita. Uh, his wife sat by the table, and then his daughter in law sat in the, in the kitchen all by herself. Like, why didn't the Rebbets and just sit with her daughter in law so she didn't be alone? But that's the uh, that's her business you know um, you know and, and certain rabbis refuse to have guests Shabbos day because they want to sit with their rabbis by the Shabbos table um, I, I understand the Sabah Rebbe from Brooklyn Reb Zaman Leib he, he never has guests in his home Shabbos day for that reason because he wants to sit with his rabbis who by the way uh, my rabbis and uh, drove, actually both of the Sabah Rebbe since at different times uh, on more than one occasion and been in her car. My wife drives a lot of ladies in the, in the Hasidic community and so she, she has the distinction of having having both Sabah Rebbe since in her car at different times uh, and I think of more than one occasion. Um, so uh, so she, she knows both of them. The <clears throat> kind of, uh, going back to uh, what we were talking about here and different things. The and again, this is not what I meant to talk about. So. But these are certain issues to talk about here. Um, all right, I think I'm going to stop this video now and make another video because 14 minutes, especially if I'm changing the subject, is a good time to stop. All right, God bless. Please like, share, subscribe, comment. All the best. Take care.